here they come, the same old crew, and it's patchy weather with morning dew. I'm glad to be back on the old to and fro. Three weeks on the slips, now I'm raring to go. Geelong's my name and Geelong's my station. Rippleside's my berth and tugging my occupation. I work along with various other vessels for the Geelong Harbour Trust. We're loyal vassals. We set off on a four hour journey to the end of the channel and then returning. Escorting a dirty big deep draft tanker. Me and the Spencer Nall will yank her. Skipper, mate, engineer, deckhands and me have one thing in common, a love of the sea. The channel is deep through the sandy ledge. The bosses are lucky, there's little to dredge. It's a quiet waterway with no siltation. The treacherous rips beyond our basin. At ten steady knots we make good time. And there she is, waiting to take our line. Here, Geelong began at Point Henry, where the first sheep and cattle were waded ashore from tall masted sailing ships. And here stands the Harbour Trust signal station. From this point, all ship movements are watched, directed and recorded. Tide movements, temperatures, wind and weather are tabulated. This is literally the control tower of the waters round Geelong and radio contact can be maintained with all vessels at all times. The line's up, we make fast at the bow and lead that ship to the refinery now. The channel's deep but the rule is firm through this narrow way, you wait your turn. The city of Geelong, 45 miles from Melbourne, with a population of 100,000, stands on the edge of Corio Bay and was once locked behind a sandbar. Now, with a 36-foot deep channel entering the harbour, it is open to ships from all points of the globe. It is a well-developed, highly industrialised city with a rich pastoral hinterland. At the headquarters of the Harbour Trust, the Harbour Masters, all seafaring men, daily plot the berthing and movement of all shipping. In such a busy port with 19 berths, handling 7.5 million tonnes of cargo each year, they often have problems of accommodation, but the tugs are available at all times, so no shipping movements are held up on their account. Pilot on board gives our skipper commands. The mate relays them to willing deckhands. It's a heaving and a pushing, the telegraph's ringing, the engines obeying, the big ship swinging. Put her in precisely at birth. We're strong and skilled. We know our work. From the hot Persian Gulf this crude oil comes. There's a yearly throughput of three and a half million tons.
mild, it promises fair, and a ship from Ocean Island there. Her holes are full of powdered rock to enrich the land and the farmer's crop. We'll lead her into Lascelles Wharf to discharge her cargo and then be off. Geelong Harbour facilities for bulk loading and discharging are particularly good and this high degree of specialisation makes it one of the cheapest ports in the world to use. Phosphate is swiftly emptied from the ship and carried to storage heaps at the works nearby for manufacturing superphosphate. The same equipment serves to unload a consignment of sulphur from Canada or Mexico or the United States of America. It also will be used primarily for manufacturing superphosphate, eventually to be spread over thousands of acres of farmland. Call to the mate. Now hold it! Hold it! Right! So the rope's made fast, and we'll tug with our might. <laughs> It's a vessel equipped with heavy lift gear. We'll tuck her in neatly at Cunningham Pier. Heavy lift, they call it. A hundred ton. Looks more like still life to me, but haste is shunned. There's plenty of industry here. It's a good situation. Well, you've got the harbour, the railhead, the highways to serve the nation. with all the experts hanging around, the heavy machinery is finally factory bound. We're on call all day, and all night if need be. A bulk of boatman's got nothing on me. So we haul a ship without her own engine power for repairs, and her empty berth will be taken in an hour. What is a port? It's a hub, a heart, a nucleus, a means of communication. It's the link between home and nations over the sea, between faraway places beyond and country hamlets behind. It's the provider of luxuries, the sender of necessaries, and vice versa. To you, and us, and all people. But only if it's well run, progressive, up to date, planned and improved, and maintained, can it give the best service. Safe anchorage, deep channels, ample berths, cargo handling facilities, safety measures, well-kept machinery, willing employees, far-sighted leaders, all are the port. These serve the city and its rich rolling hinterland, the western district of Victoria.
So steel from Newcastle, New South Wales, comes in to make fences round paddocks for fine merino sheep, green lucerne, golden wheat and oats, or fat cattle at pasture. Hello there. Those grabs are waltzing round and round, picking up coal and discharging the stuff on the ground. They put it in kilns to burn the lime, which makes cement. The result is fine. That's the ship I brought in last night. What a job it was. Cold as a bloomin' fright. Karayo Key South is where they're loading meat. They also send butter from here, and it's hard to beat. I never did like meat on account of my diesel insides. But we send a lot to America and Great Britain besides. Not just carcasses either. Deep frozen in neat little packs. We export to get dollars. Hmm. The clothes for the ladies' backs. Terrible weather, but ships come and ships go. We've got to be on the job whether or no. It's a nine-inch rope, you know, and they call it a spring. <laughs> what a name for such a great ruddy thing. Now off you go to fill your hold a new Sally stove with phosphatic rock from Nauru. Our wheat ship's coming in. She's high in the water. She'll be down to the Plimsoll line when outward we haul her. The grain elevators at Geelong gather into their vast storage space all of Victoria's yield of exportable wheat. Here in the world's largest grain terminal is stored the full summer's wealth until it is shipped overseas. The whole system within the enormous silos is controlled from one central electronic panel. All bins, floors, conveyors are connected with the maze of electrical wiring and at no time is the grain touched by human hand. Two ships loading, we help her away with wheat for India or far Cathay. Mm -hmm. 
In late afternoon and the low sun's light, a trim ship is a beautiful sight. We work by day and we work by night, guided now by the channel light. It's good day or farewell to each ship as we hail her. May she prosper long and bless all who sail her. I'm glad to say I enjoy my occupation. Geelong's my name and Geelong's my station.